husband's ex-wife falsely accused us of abusing and neglecting the kids and she didn't expect us to show up in court because it was in wisconsin and we live in washington state but we gave her the element of surprise and showed up in court this is part six of this little mini series that i'm discussing of her first court case against us back in 2010. click the follow button and you can watch the previous episodes on this topic here in the ex-wife playlist that i've created for you all making it easy for you to understand the entire picture of what we've discussed so far and we'll continue to discuss through this entire saga we're all sitting there with our attorney, my husband's ex-wife, his ex-sister-in-law, his ex-father-in-law, and my stepdaughter, and of course the ex-wife herself. The courtroom doors open and my husband's ex-wife goes to take my stepdaughter into court, to which the judge says to her, Miss Ex-wife, you are not allowed to bring a child into my courtroom. She had the audacity to argue with the judge at this point when the judge says there cannot be a minor in my courtroom. My husband's ex-wife did not have an attorney and never had an attorney assist her in all of her lawsuits and legal battles with her other baby daddies and with us. And the judge told her point blank that she needed to have her own legal representation and that the, the state would actually give her one if she couldn't afford one. So there was zero excuse to this because she continued to try to argue with the judge that their daughter was going to testify to the judge that she did not want to live with her dad and me anymore and wanted to live with her mom. And the judge again said, Miss ex-wife, your daughter must leave this courtroom immediately. She is not allowed to be present and this behavior is unacceptable we will meet and she will be outside the courtroom she was not very happy with the judge when this happened and it is so inappropriate for anyone to put a child in that kind of situation where they're going to try and pit them in a courtroom against their parents firsthand because that's not appropriate at any age for any child to try and do that especially when you're 11 years old and you're confused and you have one parent telling you you have to say this and you have another parent saying what's best for the child mike is sitting in the car with me and he actually just pointed out that i was mistaken that his ex-wife actually did have an attorney during their divorce and it was a family friend but that's his story to tell mike experience with her during our lawsuits with her she never had legal res legal representation once through this entire process click the follow button for part seven on what happens when my husband and his ex-wife are in the courtroom talking with the judge about the false allegations while i sit outside with my stepdaughter and her aunt my husband's ex-wife's sister his ex-sister-in-law when i went to the bathroom in the courthouse and she decided to follow me in there my husband's ex-wife falsely accused us of abusing and neglecting the kids. This is part seven of this little mini series. Click the follow button, catch up on the previous episodes right here. I made a little playlist to make it easy for you to enjoy the shit show that's unfolding. At this point, I am sitting out in the hallway with my stepdaughter while my husband and his ex-wife are in with the judge discussing the false allegations and what are the next steps in these allegations and the lawsuit that she filed against us. And my husband's ex-sister-in-law ex-father-in-law are also sitting out there on the bench with my stepdaughter and I and the ex-sister-in-law is yapping away on her perspective of how and why she thinks my stepdaughter belongs to staying with her mom full-time now and should not be living with my husband and myself. When I decide I've had enough of the BS and that it's getting a little too deep for me that I'm going to walk away from the situation for a minute and take a breather and go to the restroom. While trying to take a breather and just remove myself from the toxic vile things that I'm overhearing and having self-control to not interject myself in saying anything to the ex-sister-in-law and washing my hands in the bathroom she decides to walk in and confront me and started going off on a lot of things that you guys like to pick us apart on if you don't like our age gap and our relationship and just these false embellished versions of who i am as a person just because i was younger and had my life together better than these people in their 30s at the time had themselves put together in their life through all her ranting and raving about me and who I am and her ex-brother-in-law and what her thoughts are on where her niece should live and should be able to do and on and on and on, she decides that it's an appropriate time while in a courthouse to level a physical threat against me and even goes as far to say that she should just beat me up right then and there. If you've followed me long enough, you know in the face of adversity, I have a very cool calm head and collection about myself. And when she threatened to physically harm me while in the bathroom of the courthouse. I just stood there and smiled and said, by all means, please go ahead and level the first hit because I'm gonna let you beat the shit out of me right here right now. And then I'm gonna walk out and I'm gonna go find a police officer and I'm going to have you arrested. And I'm going to make sure that I have you charged with everything that I possibly can so that I can demonstrate the kind of environment that my stepdaughter is currently living in and being surrounded by. Because if you think this is an appropriate space to lay a threat on someone like that, you're out of your mind. You're out of your mind to threaten someone like that to begin with. But the fact of the matter is, is that she threatened me inside a courthouse bathroom thinking that was an appropriate venue and area to do such a, a violent act that got her to catch her wits about her and realize that she really didn't want to beat me up because i wasn't gonna fight back i was gonna let her just pummel me if she really wanted to because she knew that i was strong old enough to take it but then turn around and use the law in my favor in such an instance so i let her walk out ahead of me and then i straightened myself out because i was pretty rattled when she made that threat because i was not expecting to have that happen to me in the bathroom of a courthouse at all at that point regathered myself, walked back out, and sat down quietly on that court bench and just gave her a very stern stare as she continued to try and yabber to my stepdaughter, which she slowly started realizing that she needed to watch what she was saying in front of me. 
come back for the next part on what the judge decides needs to occur in the next few days before he makes a ruling either way. My husband's ex-wife falsely accused us of abusing and neglecting the kids and took us to court to try and get custody of my husband's daughter that he had always had primary custody of once she walked out of their marriage. This is part eight of the shit show that has unfolded so far. If you want to watch one through seven, you can go and watch the ex-wife playlist right here from the beginning and get caught up on context. At this point, my husband and his ex-wife are in with the judge. He doesn't have enough information in front of him other than a mom who is making accusations that her daughter is saying XYZ is happening and that she wants to have full custody of their daughter. And then a father who's there saying that none of these accusations are true and they're completely unfounded. So the judge at this time decides that it's time to get the guardian and the guardian ad litem involved. And if you are new to divorces and what occurs if there's children involved, a guardian ad litem is typically assigned to a divorce case at the beginning. So the guardian ad litem that was assigned to this case had actually been a part of this case for eight years at this point because they divorced when my stepdaughter was two years old. And unfortunately for my stepdaughter and her siblings that her mom had, because her mom had three kids total, this was not uncommon for the court in this county to have this woman bring court cases before them on a regular basis. She was actually really well known in the court system for taking the other dads to court and making false allegations against them and actually getting custody of those kids because they didn't show up to fight her and then also going to court for money against them. My husband on the flip side of this is actually, or was actually known in the court systems for being a dad who was willing to go above and beyond and pay more than he had to in his fair share of custody payments towards his kids. As I mentioned before, my husband has two kids with two different women and his son's mom actually had primary custody of their son for the first part of his childhood. And then that changed just because of life circumstances and my husband ended up with primary custody of their son. But while my husband's son was living with his mom with a, as the primary custodial parent, my husband paid more than the court required him because he wanted to make sure that his son was being really well taken care of. And he still made payments when he would come visit him in the summertime just to make sure that things were being met needs wise back home when my husband's son would go back to his mom. My husband had a really good report with family court with both the judge and the guardian ad litem because he had a proven track record that he didn't just do what he said he was going to do but he went above and beyond making sure both of his kids were always well taken care of. Click the follow button for part nine with our meeting with the guardian ad litem and how that went.